But that's simply not possible. Why isn't it possible? It's just not. Why not, you stupid bastard? What's going on guys? It's K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a great day today. Now, I do have an exciting video. In fact, I am anticipating a major substantial move for Bitcoin in the coming days and I am going to show you exactly why that is. And usually, I do start these videos out with TA. First of all, you can see that we are still being supported by this legacy trend, which is good. We are still seeing the bulls attempt to support these levels. However, I am going to push the TA to the end of this video today because I have a major, major topic I need to talk about today. It's a bit of a warning, okay? And usually I don't give financial advice on this channel, but this is definitely something that I think everyone should do. Even you watching right now, I highly, highly recommend that you take some action immediately if possible. Now, we will obviously push the TA to the end, but I do need to talk about this. I also want to talk about sort of um, a possible crazy Hail Mary uh, possibility for Bitcoin, which is very interesting if we look at the charts. We are seeing some similarities I will go over. And I also want to discuss something in particular that during this bear market, I really genuinely hope that crypto can get its act together because there's one aspect that we really need to tackle and we really need to fix right now. And if we truly want that user adoption, then this is what we need to do. So ultimately, that's what I'm going to talk about today. Like I said, major, major topics today. I'm going to try to keep this video short. We'll see how that goes, but thank you so much again for coming back to your favorite channel where we essentially just turn the camera on and give it to you straight. So let's dive in. Let's have a look at the charts. And as usual, if you're not subscribed, if you're new to the channel, definitely get subscribed. We have a lot to go over. So really, if we just have a look at this, guys, we're still just trading between this support right here, this resistance right here. We did, in fact, lose the major support. This was a biggie. Okay, this is the real problem. We need to definitely get Bitcoin back above that $30,000 level. Um, and even even that is really just the tip of the iceberg to get Bitcoin back into bullish territory. However, I am anticipating a short-term move to the upside. But as I said, TA in a minute. I want to start off with this. Now, this is uh, this is circulating all over Twitter right now. You could see uh, 1,161 retweets, tw uh, 238 quoted tweets, and 4,930 likes. Okay, so obviously this is huge. This comes from Fat Man Terra. Now, essentially what he's doing is talking about Suzu being back in Singapore, working with you know law firms specializing in white collar crime, et cetera, and where did Three Arrows Capital go wrong? So we've seen something happen in the space. We saw the crash of Terra Luna, and we saw the conspiracy about some players, potentially Celsius, right? Now, this hasn't been confirmed 100%. This is just what some people are saying. And then, you know, the uh, mafiosos, uh, essentially, or the big guys in crypto wanted to short Celsius to punish them and they have a liquidation price. And if we come down here, we actually see that Three Arrows Capital had a massive margin long on Bitcoin with a liquidation price of around 24,000. Now I'm not gonna go over this whole thing. There's 14 tweets of information, but just to summarize these three main paragraphs, they kept this in secret even with their partners because they didn't think it would realistically go that low. Terra, LFG, and market conditions sent Bitcoin plunging. Now, just real quick, I will get back to this, but if we look at this, we have seen one of the most drastic, intense sell-offs in Bitcoin's history. We've never seen the RSI this oversold. We've never seen Bitcoin fall so hard, so fast without at least a bounce or a recovery. Why is this happening? Well, let's continue. Counterparties tried contacting Three Arrows Capital. They asked for collateral, but they ghosted everyone. They were forced to liquidate their positions, causing Bitcoin to drop further from 24K to 20K. And obviously this created a liquidation cascade. It continued to fall further and we got into the 17,000s, right? You can see right here, then that triggered a bank run. People started pulling their money out of Celsius. Celsius had to freeze withdrawals. After the first default, losses were exacerbated. exacerbated. Genesis allegedly faces high nine-figure losses and will sue. BlockFi and BitMEX had some exposure. Other minorly affected parties included Cumberland, Galaxy, and Deribit. Now stick with me, I'm getting to a point here. You can see Goldman Sachs has recently come out and said that they are looking to raise $2 billion from investors to potentially purchase the assets from Celsius. The investors would be able to acquire Celsius assets at discounts in the event of a bankruptcy filing. Now listen, if Celsius does in fact to claim bankruptcy, then I don't know. Hopefully they would do the right thing, but most likely they won't because it's crypto. It's the wild, wild west. And that would mean that anyone that had funds on Celsius potentially, I don't want to spread FUD. I don't know, but it could lead to the fact that you will not be getting your funds back, right? 
And this brings me to a huge problem that we're having right now in the markets. And this is the irresponsibility of these big VCs, these capital funds, these, these guys that actually hold funds and promise these ginormous, right, 20% APY on stable coins. And although we knew it could be too good to be true, it seemed unrealistic. Well, now the you know what is finally hitting the fan. And this is something that absolutely needs to stop. And this is why also on top of what we're seeing with the Fed, on top of stocks falling, crypto is not exactly in the greatest place right now because we do have these potential margin calls. We have people, you know, it's not just what banks do. Banks lend out your money for interest, right? Banks don't go on leverage leverage exchanges and, you know, actually, you know, have margin calls where they could lose everything. Banks don't do that, or at least not that I'm aware of in the U.S. I'm pretty sure that's illegal, but nevertheless, it appears that this is what these guys were doing. So this could actually create a prolonged bear market. This is something that you can't see in the charts. You, you can't predict this, right? This is something that was going on in the background. You know, if we go over here, like Fat Man Terra was saying, he was saying that this was hidden. They were keeping this a secret from people. This is why we are going to see the regulation come into Bitcoin because these are the things that cannot happen in this space if you want the space to continue to grow and you want Bitcoin to become an asset that's on everybody's balance sheet. You want these sovereign funds, which by the way, when we do get that green light, when we do get that regulation, you know, like uh, Kevin O'Leary has mentioned, you're talking all of this money coming in from the UAE, Bill Billions and billions of dollars that could push the price up forty thousand dollars, right? Literally forty thousand on top of what we have right now. But until we can clean up the space, this is the situation that we're dealing with, right? We are slowly, gradually coming out of the wild, wild west into the new era of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. Now, the warning that I have for you guys is hopefully, and I've preached this literally for years on this channel is not your keys, not your coins. If you leave your coins on an exchange, you send your Bitcoin or, or, or your tokens or whatever to any of these exchanges, guess what guys, that's not your money anymore. You need to get a ledger. You have to withdraw your funds right now from, all, look, it seems very tempting, right? All of these high APY percentages, look, Put it on there, but don't put more than you're willing to lose, which is why you need to take custody of your own Bitcoin, of your own cryptocurrency, right? Get a Ledger Nano S, learn how to do it. It's not that complicated. I do have links below in the description. You don't have to use them. You'll help support the channel if you do. But seriously, guys, I don't need anyone's money. What I need is for you to take responsibility for your own cryptocurrencies or, you know, like they're doing with some of these things that we've seen in these states where banks are going to start to custody it. Okay, maybe, you know, I'm not saying trust the banks, but unfortunately, when you're looking at the lesser of the two evils, you may want to trust a bank more than you want to trust some of these potential, you know, DeFi exchanges. And this has really put sort of a nail, not a nail in the coffin officially, but it's definitely put some damage on the DeFi space and it's going to take some time to recover. And we don't know who else hasn't come out to the light yet, who else has their Bitcoin and could be getting margin called. And this could be your Bitcoin being used as collateral. You don't even know this, right? Where are they getting all of this percentage APY from, right? Well, when times are good, of course, yeah, we're all we're all doing great. Everything's going to the moon, you know, long it to the moon, 20x, 100x, right? We're not in that situation anymore. So that is exactly what I wanted to talk about. Number one, get your crypto off of the exchanges unless you're trading. If you're trading, okay, well, you're already taking a risk anyway, right? If you're using leverage and you're trading, we already know that you're risking your capital as is. So fine, risky situation, risky outcome potential, sure. But if you're just going to hold it, you're just going to be a hodler, get it off the exchange and get it onto a Bitcoin, uh, get it onto a Ledger Nano S, a Trezor, whatever you want to use. I recommend Ledger, but that's that. So that's number one. That's number one. Number two, we're going to switch into Bitcoin mode right now. Now, I want to start with the fact that we've seen Ethereum jump to 10 day highs and Shiba Inu source 15%. Now, if we come over here and guys, you got to admit, we called this. I Do you guys know anywhere? Can you can you like long and short Bitcoin dominance? Is that a possibility? Maybe I'm unaware of this, but that would be really fun because we knew that Bitcoin was going to hit resistance here. We called it. It did. And in fact, the Bitcoin dominance from the top to the bottom is down 10%. So I would have liked to have at least like, you know, short term shorted that. I don't know if that's a possibility. Um, but yeah, if you guys do want to learn how to long and short regular crypto, trade regular crypto, I do recommend checking out the tutorial popping up above. We have over $23,000 in bonuses below. Below. Take advantage of all of those during the bear market. It takes like 20 seconds to sign up. Absolutely free. Check that out, guys. But anyway, getting back to this, we knew that we were going to have this Bitcoin dominance pull back. Now, 
you might be saying to yourself, well, isn't that not good, right? We want Bitcoin dominance to go up. Well, what I'm actually noticing right now is that usually you tend to see Bitcoin fall first, then Ethereum, and then the altcoins, right? It kind of has a trickle down effect. And what we might be seeing right now potentially is a trickle up effect, if that's a possibility. It's a lot easier for these guys to move the lower cap altcoins, right? And they're going to slowly try to take those profits, sell them out into the mid caps. And then I do believe Bitcoin is looking for a bigger move. Now, why do I think that? Well, number one, the reason that I think Bitcoin might be looking for a bigger move is because we actually broke out of this downtrend. And if you look at this uptrend right here, we came to this apex and we actually had the previous resistance right here acting as support. Can you guys see this? And we've actually put in, this is a four hour chart, so it's nothing super major, but one, two, three, four, five, six candles that closed directly on it. And if we zoom in right here a little closer, you can actually see that we've actually found support right here on the upward sloping trend. So we actually found support twice on the lower time frame, And also, although you know, it's a little bit ugly looking, whatever, but there is a bit of a head and shoulders that could be looking to play out. And we have actually broken through the neckline. So this is three different reasons why on the short term, there could be a potential move to the upside. And we had warned about a short squeeze. Now, if for some reason tomorrow you're watching the video and we're down here, keep in mind it's the weekend. So there is the possibility that we have a fake out to the downside. Like I said, I don't really pay attention to major, major moves until Monday hits. So we do have two more days of the weekend. Anything could happen. But ultimately, I do believe that we will end up closing a daily candle above this level. And we could still be looking for some of these levels right here. Next level being 21,000, uh, actually almost 22,000. Um, and the level after that is around 24,200 right here. And then we have this mass, massive downward sloping uh, resistance. That was the worst ever uh, drawing. This massive downward sloping resistance right here, which is going to be big for Bitcoin to break out of. But you have to understand that it has been actually a little crazy how fast the markets have gone down. But usually markets don't just go straight down. And also keep in mind, OK, even the bears need liquidity. The bears need liquidity, right? They sell into strength. If you don't have strength, how can you sell? So what they want is to fake you out, pump it up a little bit so that then they can sell down into it, which is why I said that if we get to these levels right here, it would be an opportunity to look for a short. If you're looking to trade a bear market, that's how you trade a bear market. Some people in the comments are mad at me like, why are you telling me to short Bitcoin? I'm not telling you to short Bitcoin. I'm not telling you to do anything. You could dollar cost average. You could sell into cash and just wait for the bottom, whatever you want to do. But in a downtrend, you short the downtrend. That's what you do until the downtrend gets broken and then you start longing the support. We're in a downtrend until it gets broken. I mean, at some point it's not gonna work, but right now it's not looking too bright. It's looking like we're gonna hit some serious resistance between 25 and 30K. If we can get above that, then maybe we can change our tune. That is a possibility. But as you can see right here, not only do we have the main major downward sloping resistance right here, but we also have the short term downward sloping resistance, which has been supported by three three points of contact, which traditionally makes it a full on trend. So this is a very, very, very important level. And if Bitcoin was to pump straight up, let's just say we had like a green God candle from this point, you're looking exactly at $28,900. So that's like if we just straight up started pumping out of nowhere tomorrow, you're going to run into massive resistance right here because you have the downward sloping trend and you have the support that's been flipped into resistance. It's just very simple. And, you know, lots of guys, they have all these crazy indicators all over the charts. You don't need all these indicators, guys. I mean, some of them, sure, they work, but ultimately, if you just look at support, resistance, trends, and price action, most of it is pretty apparent. It's very obvious where the price is going, and that is how most algorithms trade. Most algorithms don't trade using specialized indicators and all this stuff. No, they literally use support, resistance, and trends. That's how they do it. That's what they do. That, I mean, you, you know, a lot of people think these guys are smart. They're not that smart. <laughs> smart money's not that smart. Let me actually tell you, okay? And if we have a look right here, another reason that um, I am saying that ultimately we could be looking for more of the downtrend is because if you look at the MACD, yes, it's completely oversold, but we're also in this red territory. We have these moving averages moving down, and you could see that we're not even curving back up yet, right? Although, yes, I'm not going to lie, you know, we do have a bit of a trend, Um you know, forming up right here, right? You could say that we are forming up a little bit right here, but ultimately, you know, this is still looking like if we look at the weekly chart, it could potentially take us to at least mid-August before we really start curving to the upside. So you really can't even look for any type of major recovery according to the chart, according to the data until at least the end of the summer. And I had my targets for, you know, a potential reversal around the end of this year. We had it sometime between October to December. Unfortunately, now it looks like it's leaning more towards December. Now, 
Now, one short-term thing that would be nice is if we could close above the 200 weekly moving average, which is sitting at around 22,430. Now, keep in mind, if we don't close above it by the end of this weekend, that would be the first time in Bitcoin's history that we never closed above it after a weekly candle, which would essentially mean we don't have anything left. That's it. All the models are broken, like 100%. Like none of them work at this point, right? We're just entering a completely different paradigm. So that is, uh, you know, ultimately what I wanted to talk about. But here's the Hail Mary pass. So like my buddy Velvet pointed out, there is a potential chance of what they refer to as an expanded flat pattern. Now, you know, I'm not really a huge pattern trader, which is why the head and shoulders take it with a grain of salt. I've seen a lot of them fail in Bitcoin. Ultimately, your friend is trend, price action, and the direction of, of the movement, like ultimate, like, you know, spider lines and stuff like that. That works the best for Bitcoin. In fact, a lot of those Bart Simpsons that you see, they tend to hit those spider lines and then come straight down, right? It's the easiest way to trade. I don't know why people overcomplicate it, but, you know, if you guys want me to throw a thousand indicators on my charts, I will, but it's not going to really change the trend. But in this case, an expanded flat is an expanded form of a regular flat pattern. Here, wave B extends and the robustness of B provides that the market wants to go in the direction of B. So there is that possibility. There's always that possibility. You can never say with certainty that this is what's going to happen. But like Velvet points out, there is a possibility that we could be nearing the bottom and maybe we have one more retest of around the 2019 thousands and then we do continue to the upside. We'll keep our eyes on it. That is a possibility, right? But what I did want to end on is the fact that Solana Labs has revealed a mobile phone called SMS, an Android smartphone device. Yesterday, they revealed that they had the SMS software kit, which provides tools for developing native Android mobile apps, walls, and games, and also includes a decentralized app store. The company also revealed that Saga, a powerful Android smartphone will be released in early 2023. So why am I talking about Solana? Who cares right now? Well, the reason I'm bringing this up is because one of the biggest barriers for, for crypto right now is user experience, right? The UI on most of these apps is terrible. It's horrible. I hate using it. Every time I go into it, it's like learning a new language or learning a new code, right? That's not how you're going to get mass adoption. So what I hope that we do in this bear market, and I'm talking to all you guys building out there, I'm not a developer. I hope that we focus on user experience so that when we do get out of this bear market, when we do head into the next bull, which is going to happen. I see absolutely no reason why we can't take out the previous all-time highs. It could take a little bit longer this time just due to the circumstances, due to the extended, um, you know, selling, uh, the, the, the Fed remaining hawkish. We have stocks still falling, you know, potential margin calls and liquidations of these big guys. But ultimately, at the end, it will be flushed out. It will reset. The Fed is not going to let unemployment rates skyrocket 20, 25 percent. They're going to have to put the brakes on at some point, right? We know that. And it's at that point that I do believe that Bitcoin will be the biggest benefactor of that move, but I still believe that in the process, we need to make it easier. We need to make it more accessible. We need to make it like these apps that you download on the app store, right? You open it up, you look at it. Very simple to understand. Nice user interface, something we need to focus on. So I'm talking to you guys out there, developers. I hope that you're working on this for the next time because user adoption isn't going to come if, you know, I have to learn how to do all these parameters and write and connect to Web3 and do all these crazy things, right? You have to do that on the back end. You have to make the front end simple. So that's where I want to end on today's video. I love you guys. You're awesome. Just wanted to let you know what I'm looking at on the macro environment. I am anticipating a move for Bitcoin. I do think it's time for a relief rally. However, I do think that we will still potentially hit lots of resistances ahead. If you are interested in learning how to trade, make sure that you watch the videos popping up right here, right now, and make sure that you get subscribed to the channel and I will keep you updated on that moving forward. My name's K-Dub. This is Crypto Zombie. Until next time, stay crypto. And of course, peace out.